the cob basically move around according to conditions and they come inshore normally on a pushing tide in this part of the coastline so what happens is close inshore you get these kind of gutters that run parallel to the beach and uh, on a low tide there's not enough water in those to hold fish but as the tide pushes in over the bank behind the gutter you get a little bit of churning sand and that white milky water coming over the bank and spilling into the gutters the cob actually come and move in and they prepare to be in fairly shallow water because they don't feel so exposed it's not clean water there's puffing sand there's, uh, there's milky water and bubbles and so they can move around in there feeling relatively safe and uh, also they have an advantage over the prey species which rely heavily on eyesight to escape predation so the cob uses his uh, sense of vibration and very sensitive lateral line to pick up bait fish movement and to home in on, on the bait. So basically when you're driving along the beach, you're looking, you're watching the formations all the time and when you see a bank with a little bit of a deeper gutter on the inshore side of it, that's the right kind of spot. When you see the water uh, filling up in there and getting nice and bubbly and a little bit sandy, those are definitely the kind of spots that you're going to find cob in and that's where you're going to want to stop and start pulling some of these, uh, these soft baits through that water and just work it in. You don't need to do a lot of casts. If there's a fish or two in there, they'll pick up the vibrations quite quickly and hold in. So if you've done 10 casts in an area and, and picked up no fish, it's more than likely a good move to pack up and look for the next area. The rod and reel that I've chosen to, uh, to use for, for casting uh, paddle tails on this particular trip is the, uh, the Penn Battalion rod. It's a 9 foot 4 rod, so it's, it's, it's a relatively short light rod, but uh, got good backbone, very, very strong. Some of the other features that, uh, that make this rod uh, something worth choosing, uh, in my opinion, is the fact that it comes fitted with the Fuji K-series anti-tangle guides, which is really nice for casting braid, especially in the wind. The guides are designed to not get, uh, get line hang-ups on the guides, so you don't get those wind knots, you don't get snap-offs in the cast. The line travels through very nicely, and it's something that I have noticed when, when casting with this rod, is that uh, the cast is very smooth, and the, you don't get that line slap through the guides and the blank. It's actually quite a silent cast, which is really, really nice. And the rod's fairly sensitive, but uh, I've been so impressed with the pulling power of this, uh, of this light little rod. It's absolutely ideal for the job. And I've matched it with the, uh, the Pen Conflict 2 uh, reel and the, the 4000 size. Now the Conflict 2 is a new model, and it's, uh, it's actually Pen's lightest weight spinning reel so it's, it's very very lightweight compared to other models it's got a very strong construction it's tough one of the nicest features in my opinion is the line lay is actually pretty smooth and that is very important when fishing with braid and especially when making long casts if the line lay is not nice and smooth you're going to pick up problems with your braid you're going to be throwing baitches off and wind knots you know, that just makes, makes fishing frustrating and annoying. So, I've been very impressed with this. The drag is excellent as well. I think that this Pen Conflict 2 series is, is something that's going to sell very well. Up to now, I've got absolutely no complaints with it. I've been pretty impressed with it all around. Looking forward to testing it even more. Yeah, the braid that I've chosen to use for the cop, uh, spinning here in Angola on this trip is the Berkeley Whiplash. Crystal 30 pound. This stuff is, is uh, in a class of its own in terms of thin diameter. It's, it's very, very, very thin, but it's also tough and extremely strong. So you can get a lot onto, onto the spool. You can get longer cast using a thin diameter braid. The other thing I like about it very much is that bright orange color, and it's quite high vis, so I can see at any time where my line is makes it easier for me to keep it clear of rocks, to keep it clear of waves, and uh, also to pick up 
Mwalua is sometimes in low light conditions, just follow the line. So I'm enjoying this braid, it's really good, and I must say, it hasn't let me down once yet. I've had absolutely no problems with it. I'm really happy. I am impressed with it. So, 